Welcome to our amazing students and future colleagues. My name is Dan Brown and I would like to introduce Clinical Thought of the Week, hashtag the blocking tutor. I will only take up a few minutes of your precious time. One of my medical mottos is how we should continue to learn and grow through simple thought-provoking clinical stories. This will help foster lateral thinking and extend our knowledge base. Now relax, take a coffee. This is not a lecture. These are informal glimpses at a range of topics which will leave you pondering. Big disclaimer, do your research to clarify the evidence base for any of the statements I make here today. Question what I say and question what I write. So, are you ready? What is the clinical thought of the week? Let's find out. The return of fossy jaw. Have you heard of this? Does this mean anything to you? Let's see. Take a look at these pictures if you dare. Question, what is the relationship between this nasty picture of a gruesome rotting jaw and osteoporosis? Now the answer lies just ahead, but have you any immediate thoughts in mind? What is the connection here? Let's see what the answer is. The common matchstick. Why, you ask? Well, it contains phosphorus, which is used in the most commonly prescribed medication for osteoporosis, bisphosphonates. But why a rotting jaw? Grotesque. Well, let me tell you an interesting fact. The match in this picture has a red tip, as in red phosphorus, but matches in the 19th century used to contain white phosphorus, which caused big problems. It was toxic, extremely toxic. Poisonous phosphorus was inhaled by industrial matchmakers and caused numerous health problems, including tooth infection and bone death, especially of the jaw. Hence, osteonecrosis of the jaw, aka fossy jaw. Now take a look at some of these pictures here. These matchmakers, often young women, suffered severe facial disfigurement. Inhaling too much phosphorus could induce fluorescent vomit, bluish breath and create an eerie glow around their mouths. This was not pleasant. So, what happened next? What do you think should happen? Well, the London Match Strike 1888. Annie Besant was a leading activist at the time who instigated the strike and help change working practices. Now, if you walk around the streets of Bow in East London, like you do, you will discover this sign. Go take a look this weekend in honor of Annie B. Subsequently, white phosphorus was prohibited in favor of red phosphorus. So what relevance does this have to osteopaths? Well, many of our patients are on osteoporotic medications, including bisphosphonates. It still contains phosphorus. These medications slow down osteoclast activity and try to promote bone density and are successful in many cases. Now, while the common side effects include joint and muscle pain, nausea, difficulty swallowing and heartburn, it's the rare side effects that have frightened many of our patients and often question us. What is being called bisphosphonate related osteonecrosis of the jaw or bronze is still a relatively new debate, the re-emergence of the industrial scourge of fossy jaw. This is why all our patients on bisphosphonates must inform their dentist. Now do not be too alarmed, calm down. <laughs> the risk of bronze is rare and bisphosphonates still offer many benefits which outweigh many of the risks. Patients are also advised to have drug holidays from bisphosphonates. This reduces long-term exposure and lessens the risk. Antibiotics and preventative dental care reduce the severity of the condition. And bronze is usually more associated with those on high dose intravenous bisphosphonates, such as for cancer, which of course is essential. So finally, do a little research on fossy jaw. The two most important areas currently are one, examining the pathogenesis of bronze and two, trying to achieve a firmer grasp on its true incidence 
especially in the patient population on treatment for osteoporosis. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's time to say goodbye. And until the next time, hashtag the blogging tutor. Thank you.